George here, and we are once again back in my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's in VR. And uh, rather than have you watch uh, the series of five or six videos of me actually going through the entire construction of the kitchen, I decided that it would be better to just do a time lapse. This way, you get all the content in a short amount of time. Um, but I can understand how sometimes watching some of these videos as things slowly progress can be a little bit boring. So why not speed it up a little bit and have some fun? So what you're seeing now is me going through the kitchen, making alterations. Uh, I, sometimes I'm deleting the back faces on different objects to try to reduce the poly count or the uh, UV space that's going to be used. But the reality is I'm going to go back in there and add those back in. Um, I think I could do that off video. But the general idea is that I want to make each of these uh, items a separate piece that can be reused over and over and over again. So I'm going to go in and make sure that they have backs and fronts just in case you rotate them around in some way that I'm not expecting. But anyway, uh, if you look here, we're going through pretty much and we are ma uh, manipulating the UVs, um, just sorting them out using, you know, layout and so forth and unfold on each of these different components. Now, I did run into a couple problems here and there with some of these things. It had something to do with mirroring inside of uh, Maya, where the normal seemed to get locked. And I also seemed to get some back face culling going on because of flipped normals. Now, rather than deal with that kind of stuff, I just end up deleting it and um, reduplicating it again. And that's pretty much what I do for most of what you see here. Now, at the moment, I'm dealing with the entire kitchen, but uh, very shortly when I decide to manipulate each individual object, I'm going to delete all of the duplicate ones and deal with them one on one inside of uh, Maya. The idea being that I'll be reusing these elements and laying them out inside of Unity, not inside of Maya. Now the stove is an interesting one uh, because at first I decided to combine them all together into one giant object and then off camera I went in there and actually uh, subdivided the top part of the stove, the middle part and the bottom part as separate objects just so that they could be reused however someone sees fit, you know, whenever this thing gets released and then people can actually play with it. One thing is you'll notice that the glass itself in the stove is being a separate object. That's in order to make it so that that gets rendered on a separate layer um, inside of Unity. If I were to combine that with everything else, then everything would have to be on a transparency layer, and that just, mess, just makes a mess of everything. Better to leave the glass by itself on its own layer and have that render later on in the render queue than to do all that stuff together and potentially have artifacts. Now finally, I'm in the Substance Painter. I've exported out all the individual objects one by one, and now I'm going through and I'm creating a basic material that I'm going to be using for everything else. Uh, this basic material is pretty much going to be um, just some wood, some pine, and then a different orientation on the wood, and then a metal texture. And that's pretty much what I need for everything that's going to happen as you see here. All I'm going to do is uh, save that as a smart material, and then I'm going to drag that onto each new object, and then manipulate the UVs as those UVs happen to be laid out. And and that's pretty much the entire process that I follow for almost all the objects that you're going to see here. I created the, the base uh, smart material and I'm just going to reuse that over and over and over again for every subsequent object so they all have the same feel even though I'm working with them individually. Now I could have taken a lot more time with the stove, but I decided really just to kind of move along and, and get stuff done. So I go in and find a temperature gauge online, I save that out, I load that in, I make some modifications in Photoshop, get rid of some of the text here and there, and then more or less just make sure that I, uh, you know, get rid of the background so it's an alpha material, and then I'm just going to stamp that onto this area. Now it does take me a few minutes to remember how to do this because I don't stamp very often, so I kind of mess it up a little bit at first but eventually I get it right and I just need to erase some of the stuff around the sides. It doesn't look wonderful. Um, I probably would like to change a little bit of it, but it's okay. Now at this point, I kind of forget how to deal with transparency inside a Substance Painter. I go in there, I manipulate the shader, I change it to be the right one, but I forgot that I needed to add an opacity map. Eventually I remember that as you see here and then we can actually have transparencies inside of our, uh, our viewport. Once again, same process as before. I'm just bringing that smart material over, and then I notice that in this case, uh, something's wrong with this object. 
So I'm going back in, I'm going to manipulate the UVs to make sure they're all set up properly. I'm also noticing that several times that my materials are not properly named or associated with these objects. So that's another thing that I jump back and forth several times from Substance Painter to Maya as I see things needing to be corrected. If you're going to make corrections, this is the time to do it before you get into Unity and you've done several stages of, of work. So go back and forth between Maya and Substance Painter, re-export your object, re-upload it into the project settings area, and um, you know fix anything that's, that's wrong now while you still can and things don't become a giant pain in the butt. So this is one of the last objects, really nothing going on here. Um, now what I do notice is that parts of the stove are just wrong. And in a second, you'll notice that that backside will not change to the right color of pine. And that's because the UVs were never assigned and it's basically a one by one pixel UV. So now I'm gonna go into here, going to actually isolate that object out and then I'm going to fix it uh, so that it works just fine. Re-upload it back into Substance Painter now and then go ahead and repaint everything that I want. I'm doing pine on the inside just because I don't know, I wanted something different, a different material, and I just have memories of, of, of older houses that my grandparents had where there was a pine in the inside, whether that, that was for the kitchen or for their fur coats or whatnot, in order to keep moths at bay, I don't know, I don't really care. It's just giving it something more interesting than what we saw before. So now I'm going to go ahead and load this up into Unity, and we've got our old scene loaded up, but now we can go into our new scene and uh, start loading in all the objects, and this part is just really tedious. It's just going through and assigning the materials properly to every single object. Once again, something you don't need a whole episode on. Instead, two minutes of uh, doing this is just far enough. So you can see here, I've loaded up all the different pieces. The idea being that they're all now completely modular. We can use these to create a kitchen however we want it to be and reuse these assets in other projects as opposed to before where I was cutting out the backs and trying to optimize them as much as possible. 